Hi everyone, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 41 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Thank you, and welcome to any new viewers checking this channel out, and a big welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you so much for being here. Today is a, another really nice, sunny, but cold Friday here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. It was super foggy this morning, super creepy. I loved it. Uh, we do have a Ravelry group for this podcast, and that is where you'll find the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It's where you'll find knit along stuff and giveaway stuff, and it's super fun over there, so go check it out if you haven't yet. We've got a knit along that is starting to wind down and come to a close in the Ravelry group. That's the Deep Dark Night Cal. If you would like to see the details on that, go check out the Ravelry group and the chatter thread. That's where you'll find all the information. And I am going to be announcing winners for that knit along in a week from today. So next Friday, which is the first Friday in November. We're going to be giving away some prizes and I'm super excited. So thank you so much for participating. If you have been, there is definitely still time to get an entry in or a few if you want. You can knit or make anything big or small. So go check out the chatter thread. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, that's the deep dark night, Cal. Check out the hashtag on Instagram too. Um, I will get started by telling you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing another version of the Agnes dress. Uh, this is the Agnes pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. And this is a version of that top that Tilly and the Buttons put out on their blog to adapt it to a dress. And um, you pretty much use the top pattern for the bodice and then you do like a gathered skirt here. So that's what I'm wearing today. This is not the best fitting dress that I've ever made. Um, but, and that's because I used the size, the second to smallest size instead of the smallest size, which is what I should be using for this pattern. Um, so it fits a little big, which is why I'm wearing this store-bought cardigan over it. Cause if I don't wear something over it, it like, just doesn't fit that good. <laughs> um, but I do really, really enjoy this dress. This is in some jersey fabric that I quite like. All right. I have an FO. I have the biggest FO. I have the... Just take a look. Okay, so I finished my Marled Magic. There's a tassel. I'm obsessed with tassels now. I didn't know I liked tassels. But I... I think about them every day. I think constantly about tassels now. Anyway, <laughs> so my finished object is my Marled Magic Shawl. It is, okay, this is the right side. It's big, you guys. I am going to move my beverages out of the way really quickly, lest I dunk my tassels in them, because you know I have a history of doing that. Here's, Here's my marled magic, you guys. Isn't it amazing? I think it's amazing. I love it so much. Look at that beast. Mm. So, this is the marled magic shawl pattern by Stephen West. I knit this for the Jinx Woolen by Knit Along 2017, which is ending soon, and I'm so happy I made it. <laughs> it so much. I had so much fun working on this thing. There are a bunch of different yarns in here, um, including lots of Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand-dyed yarn company. There's also lots of Woolen Vine yarns in here and um, some Jinx yarns, so those were kind of the two yarns I really wanted to make sure I got in here because it was for their knit along. And there's a lot of scraps. We have got some Madeline Tosh, we have got some Hey Holly Ho Hum. We've got some Hannah Made It. We've got all kinds of stuff. So something I really like about this shawl is that the way it ended up, and this was totally unintentional, but I super like it, 
It kind of goes from dark to light. So like the darkest gray tones are on this side. And then it kind of, so most of the dark stuff is over here. And then it kind of gets pinker and pinker as you go. And over here, I've got this pop. This was the last section I did of mint green. It kind of doesn't look mint green on the screen, but it's mint green. And how I did this thing. So this was a mystery knit along originally released in sections and there were two sizes to this shawl you could do the medium size or the large size if you did the large size it meant you did an extra two sections i decided to do an extra one section instead of both extra sections so i kind of did a size in between the medium and the large now it is so hard to figure out <laughs> this is just like a mess Okay, so the extra section that I did was this wedge here all along the bottom. Those bottom two colors are kind of the last wedge. And what you were supposed to do is do another wedge along this edge to make it the large size, but I just didn't do that. I just did the extra wedge on one side, and I'm really happy I did. Um, it added some extra length, but didn't add that much extra length this way <laughs> um, and it's so awesome so let's talk about the tassels because I freaking love them so I made these two tassels to go on the ends and like seriously I love these tassels so much they're amazing and then this is the tassel that's in the middle I don't love this tassel as much I was a little confused as to how you were supposed to do this tassel, honestly, and I'm pretty sure I did it the way he tells you to do it in the pattern, um, but it's not as tassel-y as these tassels, but it's okay. I'm, that's okay. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great tassel. <laughs> um, it's got this braid down the middle, like they all do, and yes, thank you to everybody who put my mind at ease a few episodes ago. I did do it right. All of the ends hang out the back of the shawl, and then at the end, you poke them all through to the front. So thank you so much to everybody who let me know that in advance. All I had to do was read ahead in the pattern. but So we've got that cute little braid that goes down the front, and I love it. It's, it's so massive. It's a blanket, you guys. And it was just... What I loved about this is that it was done in pieces, so it didn't feel like I was knitting a huge blanket. It felt super fun the whole time because I kept changing what I was doing. And, I mean, <laughs> um, so I have not worn it out yet because I wanted to keep it nice and crisp for you guys. I did block it, and it blocked out huge, which I love because I love a huge shawl. And... Yeah, it's amazing. So I have experimented a little bit with how to wear it. And this is, I think I'm just gonna stand up because it's so big. <laughs> yeah, kind of have to stand up to see everything. So get out of your chair. Okay. So we've got this way, right? Kind of old fashioned tassels hanging out the front kind of way. And that's what it looks like at the back. Ba -ba. Now the other way that I have spoken about in the past that I love to wear shawls is like this. Fold it in half, take the whole thing, wrap it around here, and then pull the ends through. So there's that way. And that is like kind of scarfy style. So I really like that. And then you have the tassels that hang down the front like that. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> the other way, which isn't really how I generally wear shawls, but I like to try to experiment like this anyway, is the ever so popular bandana way. So like that. So it's huge, but in my opinion, it's perfectly wearable. I am so 
in love with it. I'm so into this whole idea of the tassels just hanging out right there. Oh my God. They're like curtains. <laughs> they remind me of curtains. I love it. I'm so into tassels. I want to make more. I, when I made these, I made them super long to begin with and then I cut them off just to, I don't know why, because I did. And I had the tassels made before I blocked it. And I didn't want to block the tassels. So I put them on afterwards. So while I was blocking, I just had these tassels hanging around and I was just like walking around with them and like putting them up places. And I'm thinking of trying to do some kind of home decoration tassel thing. I don't know what, but I kind of want to just make some more random tassels and hang them around my house somehow. I don't really have the types of curtains that need like, or the types of blinds that need like pull cords or else I would attach them to the end of those, but I'm going to figure something out. Maybe I'll do like a garland of tassels. Oh my God. <laughs> I could do that for Christmas. Oh my God. I could decorate my Christmas tree with tassels. You guys. Last year I made a bunch of pom-poms for my Christmas tree. Oh man, tassels. That's what I'm gonna do. Tassels and pom-poms. All over my Christmas tree. I like cannot stop thinking about tassels. I just love them so much. They are just so amazing. Look at the hot pinkness of these tassels. So fun. Okay, that's my moral magic. I knit this on a size eight needle. The whole thing is fingering weight yarn held double with the occasional sport weight and lace weight. And that's it. That's it. It's done. It's a thing now. It's a thing in my wardrobe now. I feel so fancy. Moving on to works in progress. I don't have that much this week. <laughs> I am. Um, I spent a lot of time working on this and I've got a couple things that I did work on. The first is living in my Sugar Tots project bag. And these are my Whiskey Bent and Hellbound socks. Now I am using lollipop yarns in the Whiskey Bent and Hellbound colorway. And this is a self-striping yarn, olive browns and yellows and oranges and beiges. And here's what I got. So I've done the cuff, the leg, I did the heel flap, the heel turn, and I'm working on the gusset right now. I have all the gusset stitches picked up. Um, and this sock, was uh, originally cast on with a size zero needle, 60 st stitches on the cuff, and then switched to a size one for the leg. But the cuff was just too tight. It was too tight. So I ripped it out and I recast on with a size one. I kept the 60 stitches and then just remained on the size one for the rest of it. So this sock is pretty unusual for me. Um, the yarn is thinner than most of the sock yarn that I generally work with. It's a really fine sock weight. So I went down, no, I went up in stitch count to 60 stitches. Usually I do 56 stitches and um, did a size one the whole way. So it fits really great now. I did a two by two ribbing for the cuff. I cast on with the German twisted cast on and I do a standard slip stitch heel flap and guess it. And I really, really am enjoying these socks. I'm using for the first time my high, no, my Chiagu Twist Interchangeable Mini Needles. Did I say that all right? I don't know, but it's all that stuff. So they're awesome. I love them so much. Uh, this is the size one and it's an interchangeable tip. I've got it on a 40 inch cord and they're just, amazing. I love them. Everybody loves these. Everybody says how much they love them and I love them too. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it to win it with these needles. I'm on the bandwagon. 
I love them. I also got a size zero needle tip for um, cuffs for future socks. So I just picked up the gusset stitches this morning and something that I have always done, I have switched recently. So for the heel flap, I will do a certain amount of slip stitches and that's kind of how I count the length of the heel flap. In this case, I did 16 slip stitches. So what I would do in the past is when I picked up for my gusset stitches, you pick up along the selvaged stitches edge, whatever. <laughs> you pick up those edge stitches from the heel flap and you pick up one per slip stitch. So I did 16 slip stitches. So what I would use to, what I used to, oh my God. <laughs> what I used to do is pick up an extra stitch. So because I did 16, I knew I would pick up 17 stitches on the edge for my gusset and then decrease down from there. And my thinking, I don't know where I really got this from, but my thinking has always been, you pick up an extra stitch just to make sure there's no holes, no gaps made. But I always got a hole. I always got a hole and I always felt really awkward picking up that extra stitch like where does it go and I always felt like I put the needle in the wrong spot because it wasn't an actual slip stitch um, and I would always get a hole. So uh, like a couple of socks ago I decided to stop doing that to just pick up the same amount of slip stitches that I had. So in this case I had 16 slip stitches. I just picked up 16 stitches on the edge. One for each slip stitch. And that has been working out so much better for me. I'm like, it's like a revelation. I'm so happy that I started doing that. Um, I don't know how you guys do it. And I, I seriously, I don't know if that's like a thing that I just made up a long time ago or if it's something I was taught. But um, I have stopped picking up that extra stitch along the selvage edge. And it's worked so much better for me. I don't get holes anymore at all in the um, little thingy thing right here. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's something I started doing recently and I'm super happy about it. So again, these are 60 stitches on a size one and I just gotta do the gusset decreases back down to stitch 60 and then I can get going with these. This is the first sock and I seriously, I love this yarn so much. I love it. So I've been having a lot of fun with those and I can't wait to start the second one. I did the heel as you probably saw in a contrasting color which is this little ball right here. So I may or may not do the toe with this brown as well. I don't have that much. It may just be both of the heels. I don't know yet. We'll see. So it's really nice to have a self-striking sock on the needle again. I really, really am enjoying these quite a bit. The next project I have on the needles is my Mount Pleasant top. And this is living in my bag with all my new pins on it. So all of these pins are from Oplesiosaur, who's an awesome pin maker. I got a T-Rex mermaid and a little snake. And I love them. So my Mount Pleasant top is being knit out of some Greenwood Fiberworks in the Paper Roses Pink colorway. This is the Yakety Yak base. It is superwash merino yak and silk and it's gorgeous. So there's my cake. It's beautiful and sheeny and drapey and I love it so much. So what I've got so far is coming along pretty nicely. So I finished the lace, which acts as the bottom edge. And then I am a couple of inches into the stockinette. And I just started the increases. So the way this top works is you cast on with a smaller needle, do the lace, use a bigger needle for the stockinette and then you increase out towards the top. So it's it's a crop top so, and it kind of that's kind of your waist shaping. And I am enjoying this so much so far. This lace 
was so fun and easy to work on. I think it's really quite beautiful and I love it. The lace was done on a size four, stockinette on a five. And I have got um, a new progress keeper on here. I made a purchase from Charmed and Dangerous on Etsy. And along with my purchase, she sent me this freaking adorable little moon progress keeper. And I love him. He's a really like neon sparkly green and he's kind of blowing out because he's so bright and sparkly. <laughs> So right now I've got these on my Haya Haya interchangeable size five needles. I did get great gauge uh, with this yarn and these needles. So that's what we're going with and it's really coming along. This is gonna be a super quick project, I think, and I cannot wait to wear it. I don't generally wear crop tops, but I have a feeling it is gonna look really fantastic over dresses, kind of like the fit and flare style dress with the crop top just kind of like above the part where it starts to flare. I'm really excited. I think it's going to be so cool. And like I said, this yarn is amazing. The Yak and Silk and Merino blend. It's so luxurious feeling and so drapey and oh, it's just going to look so good in this top. I'm so excited about it. And I have one skein and the pattern calls for just a little over the yardage that I have, like 60 yards over the yardage I have. And at first I kind of thought I'd just wing it and probably be fine. But I did message the dyer on Etsy just to see if she could do a custom dye for me if I did run out. And she said that she actually had a skein in the same dye lot just left over and that she had one left. And um, I decided to just buy it. Better safe than sorry. So that's coming in the mail. Um, so I kind of hope I do run out of this now so that I can justify having bought that second skein of yarn. But um, I'm being responsible and safe about it. So... I'm an adult, you know, doing adult stuff, so. <laughs> so that's my Mount Pleasant. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm super excited to have this as a top in my wardrobe. And yeah, okay, that's that for that. That's that, that's that. That's everything I've been working on, that's it. Um, you know what was weird? Yesterday, I did not knit at all. Not a single stitch yesterday. It was sad. But it's okay. It's gonna, it made knitting this morning even more fun because I missed it. No spinning or sewing again this week, as has been my tradition in the past, I don't even know how long. Um, I'll get back to those things someday. I will. And they will be even more fun when I do because I will have missed them so much. Okay, so moving on to shop update. I am going to be having a Moonstone Dye Works shop update tomorrow, which is Saturday, October 28th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can find this update at moonstonedieworks.com, which um, will link you to the Etsy shop. You can also just go directly to Etsy. There is a link below in uh, what I believe is called the down bar to the shop. <laughs> so check that out if you want to get there that way. And um, I am going to be having some yarn business up in the shop tomorrow. And I'll show you what that's going to be now. I have uh, three colorways going up in the shop tomorrow. The first is some Moon Age Daydream. And this is going to be up on Stellina Sock and BFL Sock. So that is Moon Age Daydream. I love this colorway. Next up, we've got some high and low, and I've got that on three bases. This is the natural merino, and then VFL sock and Stellina sock. And I love high and low. It's a speckled yarn with teal, kind of hot green and like a really deep purple. I really, really like this colorway. And last up is some Stone Cold Manners, which is my A Court of Thorns and Roses inspired colorway. 
Um, this color was inspired by the character Azriel, who is one of my favorite characters so far. And by the way, I'm almost done with book two. It's my new favorite book. I'm in love with it. I cannot wait to read book three. I, at this point, already want to read the first two all over again. So anyway, <laughs> this is called Stone Cold Manners, and it's a really deep kind of purple gray with speckles of teal and magenta. This is it on natural merino. And then here we've got it on BFL sock and merino single. So that's what I've got going up in the shop tomorrow. And check it out if you're interested. And now on to favorites. I uh, did buy a couple things again this week. I've been on a roll lately. Um, I told you that I placed an order with Charmed and Dangerous, and that is because I somehow just saw that she had this up in her shop and I just needed it. It's happy pizza. So it's a little kawaii pizza. He's happy and he has heart shaped pepperonis on him. I love pizza. Like a lot. So <laughs> I really, really wanted it, so I got it. And uh, that's Charmed and Dangerous on Etsy. She makes some um, awesome, what are these called? Polymer clay, progress keepers and stuff. She also does jewelry. Um, and this one's really big. It's like really big. So I'm not going to use it as a progress keeper, but I'll use it as a zipper pull. And the other thing I bought because I became so obsessed with tassels is a loom. It is a loom. I got the loom. It's the L-O-O-M-E loom. And I will link to it in the show notes, of course. This is a tool that I found out about because of the Christy Glass Knits YouTube channel and Kristen of Vol and Vine and the Yarngasm podcast. Um, both of them made me want this really bad. <laughs> and I've always kind of resisted because I've honestly never cared that much about tassels or pom-poms until right now. So I did not use this to make my tassels on my Marled Magic because it came the day after I made my tassels. Um, so I haven't used it yet, but I'm really, really excited about it. It's a tool that you use to make tassels, pom-poms, or friendship bracelets, apparently. So we'll see, I don't know. I am going to make some tassels on this soon, I hope, for no good reason other than I want tassels. And we'll see how it goes. It seems like a really neat tool. I've seen the pom-poms that people make on these and they're like the best pom-poms I've ever seen. They're so lush and thick and full looking. I'm stoked about this. So I bought a loom, I can't wait to use it. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice, it feels really nice. It's wood. So that's gonna be fun, I'm excited. It's gonna be tassel city in my house. My cat's gonna go nuts. Okay, that's it. That is everything I have for you this week. Oh wait, one more thing for my favorites. I finished Dracula. So the reason why I got back to A Court of Thorns and Roses is because I finished Dracula. For the month of October, I was listening to the Audible audiobook version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And I know some of you have been joining me, so that is awesome. Thank you so much for reading along with me. Um, it was great. It was so fun reading Dracula throughout the month of October. It's something I traditionally like to do is kind of read a some kind of horror, classic horror book in October. Not modern horror. I get way too scared with modern horror. I do classic, like really old horror. <laughs> um, Dracula was great. I was inspired to read the book when I first saw the film last year, the one that was made in like the 90s. I think, or the 2000s maybe, I don't know. Um, but I loved it, I loved the film, so I knew I wanted to read the book. I read the book this month, and while I loved the book a lot, I honestly like the movie better. And that is so weird for me to say. I don't think I've ever said that about anything before. Um, I am a huge fan of literature. I am also a huge fan of film. I absolutely love film. Um, but generally, when it comes to film adaptations of books that I love, um, 
I have never liked the film better until now. <laughs> but I did see the film first. Um, the, the movie adds some things. It's definitely different than the book. There are elements to it, and I don't know if I want to give anything away in case anybody's reading it right now. Um, but I will say this baseline, the film adds romance. And it adds this one element of romance that I was super attracted to. Really, really, I liked it a lot, and it just was not in the book. So um, I think that's the... I don't know, you know, I really felt that the film kind of humanized Dracula in a way that the book didn't do. The film focuses much more on Dracula himself, the man, before he was a vampire. And it humanized him, and it gave him this love story, this, like, really incredibly romantic, um, really dark love story. And I really liked that. I... The book does this thing that a lot of literature from that era does, where good and evil are, like, separate, right? There's good and there's evil, and the, you want the good to win. You want the good to triumph over the evil. And that's what happens in the book. And the ending was a little underwhelming in the way that they did that. But the movie does this thing that's a lot more modern in a lot of ways, I feel like, where the evil part is a little more humanized. It's a little more relatable. You are almost rooting for the bad guy in some ways, you know? And I, I'm, I'm much more attracted to that. I'm much more attracted to a more diverse way of viewing good and evil. So I liked the movie better and I want to watch it again. I saw it last year and I really want to watch it again this year now that I've read the book. Um, the bummer thing is my husband will not watch it with me because he didn't like it. So <laughs> We love watching movies together. We watch a lot of movies together. And uh, sometimes there's just some stuff you will not watch with me. So I have to watch it by myself. So I might not do it because I might get scared because I'm such a wimp. Seriously, I'm such a wimp. I cannot watch scary movies by myself. I, I just can't. But I, I really want to. So I might watch it in the daytime. Plus, I'm the worst because I feel like if I watch a movie by myself, it's like wasting like audiobook or knitting time or knitting podcast time I could have. So I know I'm... I'm a huge dork. But I did really love the book. It was so fun to listen to. It was the one with Tim Curry and Alan Cummings. Cumming? Alan Cumming. I always get his name wrong, sorry. But um, the I, sh I didn't look it up, but whoever read for Dr. Of course I forget his name. The Doctor. <laughs> whoever read for The Doctor in the audiobook um, was my favorite. I, I'm pretty sure that was either Tim Curry or Alan Cumming. I'm not sure which, but I really, really enjoyed the audiobook. The audible version was great. It had a full cast. It was super awesome. And uh, the way the book was written was really cool, too, the way it was compiled. Um, so, yeah, Dracula was awesome. I highly recommend it. If you haven't read it or watched the movie, if you want to watch the movie, right now is the perfect time. I think you should do it. I love that movie. It's super cheesy. It's really cheesy, but I love it. So, okay, now I'm done. That's all I have for you this week. I hope you guys are knitting and staying well and enjoying your autumn and your October. I hope you're participating in the Deep Dark Night Cal. I hope you're participating in the Instagram hashtag autumn and sweaters and wearing all your hand knits out into the world or at home, either way. I hope you guys are having a lovely week and I hope you have a great weekend and week coming up. I uh, hope to see you at the shop update tomorrow at moonstonediaryworks.com. And if you like the video, which I hope you did, uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will talk to you all next week. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye, guys.